We always, there's a whole lot to get to today, but before we dive into the impeachment proceedings, I want to show you, I'd like to show a video that I think will give you a good idea of how the president's day went. They exemplify the genius, talent, and creativity of our exceptional nation. song, but I don't know, John, maybe we got to get it moving a little bit, but what a, <laughs> what a great movie. Yeah, he was trying to give out honors for the National Medal of Arts. He repeatedly got interrupted by music. That wasn't the only time, either. And that was the best thing that happened to him today. <laughs> on the final day of public testimony in the House, Trump's former top advisor on Russia, a very sharp woman, Dr. Fiona Hill, sat down and laid absolute waste to both the president and all the bootlickers who made the unfortunate decision to do his bidding today. <laughs> It was ninja-level witness jujitsu. She directly called out Republicans for spreading what she calls uh, the fictional narrative that suggests Ukraine meddled in our election in 2016, because they didn't. The Russians did. She went in hard on a number of subjects, so much so Republicans actually stopped asking her questions. They were just like, you know, I think I'm going to use this time to hear from myself, and they talked. <laughs> she was so thorough, Trump doesn't have to go back for phase two of his annual physical. The <laughs> prostate has been... Check. We also heard today from a gentleman named David Holmes of the U.S. Embassy in Ukraine. He's the guy who overheard Trump on that phone call with Ambassador Gordon Sondland, and the reason he overheard it is because the president's volume knob was turned up to 11 that day. Well, Ambassador Sondland's phone was not on speakerphone. I could hear the president's voice through the earpiece of the phone. The president's voice was loud and recognizable. And Ambassador Sondland held the phone away from his ear for a period of time, presumably because of the loud volume. Well, you know, the thing is, is the human voice really reverberates from inside a tanning bed. And it's... <laughs> but, of course, the president was watching and weighed in on this. He wrote, I've been watching people making phone calls my entire life. My hearing is and has been great. He never <laughs> passes an opportunity to brag. Never have I been watching a person making a call which was not on speakerphone and been able to hear or understand a conversation. I've even tried, but to no avail. <laughs> try it live. <laughs> All right, well, give us your phone number and we'll try it. But this is a man who holds press conferences in front of a running helicopter. So I think you can hear him over a phone receiver. <laughs> and if his best defense against impeachment is, I'm not loud, he's going to be in prison by Tuesday. <laughs> uh, Holmes testified the reason he remembered this call so clearly is he'd never seen an ambassador speak to the president of the United States on a cell phone in a restaurant, nor had he ever heard of a president being so interested in ASAP Rocky. Ambassador Sondland told the president that the rapper was, quote, kind of effed there and should have pled guilty. He recommended that the president, quote, wait until after the sentencing or it will only make it worse. And he added that the president should let him get sentenced, play the racism card, give him a ticker tape when he comes home. Ambassador Sondland further told the president that Sweden, quote, should have released him on your word, but that you can tell the Kardashians you tried. <laughs> well, we finally learned who's running the country. It's <laughs> Kanye's in-laws. Our president cares more about the Kardashians than the Ukrainians. This, <laughs> by the way, um, the only one in the administration who wasn't involved in this whole thing is Ben Carson, and that's just because he's been asleep for the last three years. <laughs> Everybody knew about it. But these Republicans don't seem to care. They're digging in. They have nowhere to go with this. And the animosity between the Republicans and Democrats is at an all-time high. Watching Adam Schiff and Devin Nunes trade jabs during their opening statements, it's like divorced parents giving their separate toasts at your wedding. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> and while we've heard a lot this week, the big question we still don't have an answer on is, is Jim Jordan on methamphetamines? <laughs> this Jim Jordan, if he was a character in a movie, you'd go, ah, it's too much. He's like, he's kind of like the Hulk, but instead of a big green monster, he, when he gets mad, he turns into a big white douchebag. He's this guy, <laughs> it, he's Trump's number one quid pro bro. Republicans love him. He doesn't seem to own a coat, but he does have a very catchy way of making a point. They do a two-year, $40 million, 19-lawyer, unbelievable investigation, and guess what? Guess what? But guess what? But guess what? But guess what? And guess what? 
I'm sorry, is there a question there? There was. <laughs> So just to recap, now that we have the whole story, if you haven't been following this, this is what happened. Donald Trump wanted this thing about Joe Biden's son to be like the 2020 version of Hillary's email. So he sent Rudy Giuliani, who knew some guys, who knew some other guys, to go to Ukraine to dig that dirt and plant those seeds. Then he sent his hotel buddy, Gordon Sondland, who wasn't even involved with Ukraine, he was the ambassador to the EU, he told Sondland to get together with Rudy to put the screws to the new Ukrainian president who desperately needed U.S. backing because he's at war with the Russians. So Trump knew he had Zelensky over a barrel, and he was basically like, eh, nice democracy you got there. Shame if something were to happen to it. So Giuliani and Sondland let the Ukrainians know that they had to announce an investigation publicly into the Bidens. Now, they didn't actually have to do the investigation. That's how much Mr. Crime Fighter cares about corruption. They just had to announce it so his trolls could paste that all over Facebook and Fox News. That was the plan, but there was a problem. The ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Yovanovitch, wasn't on board with it, so Giuliani and his goons moved on her like a bitch. They, <laughs> they basically fitted her career with cement shoes and pulled her out of the country, which problem solved, right? Well, unfortunately for them, just when they were about to get the goods, just as Zelensky was about to give in and announce this imaginary investigation, this whole story came out, the whistle blew, so Trump quickly released the aid. He dictates a bogus message to Sondland saying, I want no quid pro quo, and they all crossed their fingers and hope that no one ever mentions it again. And they would have gotten away with it if it weren't for the whistleblower and those meddling foreign service officials. So <laughs> that's what happened, okay? And the question now going forward for those those Congress people who support him is, are you a Republican or are you an American? And I guess we're going to find out pretty soon, hopefully. The president continues to claim that the call was perfect, there was nothing wrong, but he's been watching the hearings, and it's pretty clear that the testimony is starting to take a toll. I then heard President Trump ask, so he's going to do the investigation. Ambassador Sondland replied that he's going to do it. I think that President Zelensky will do anything you ask him to do. Hey! Even though I did not take notes of these statements, I had a clear recollection. Probably cover that up with a post-it. You know, all the cable news networks have been covering, uh, carrying these hearings live, but maybe the most lively moment of, came, from all of them came from C-SPAN, who filled the time between testimony with calls from people watching at home. Let's see if we can get one more call, and we'll go to, to Monty. Monty, are you there? Howdy. Uh, I just want to apologize, first and foremost, for all the morons on the calls earlier, especially from, uh, you know, Alabama and all that. Secondly, I just want to say impeach the <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks, Monty, in, uh, in Florida. That's it for phone calls right now. Uh, I know that should be it for the phone calls forever. Meanwhile, did you watch the Democrats' debate last night? No, nobody did. It was the lowest rated debate of all five so far. Joe Biden didn't do himself any favors in the too old department. He referred to <laughs> Carol Mosley Braun as the only African American woman elected to the Senate, which came as a surprise to Kamala Harris, the female <laughs> African American senator standing to his left. And this wasn't too good either. No man has a right to raise a hand to a woman in anger other than in self-defense, and that rarely ever occurs. And so we have to just change the culture, period, and keep punching at it and punching at it and punching at it. Well, that, <laughs> that's the thing about Joe Biden. He's not afraid to say the wrong thing. If you like that video, click the subscribe button, but only if you're ready for commitment.